Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Nicola and today we are gonna do a yin yoga practice that will target our hips, the inner thighs and inner groin. The lower body area can be often tight just from other exercises like running or even horse riding, whatever it is you are doing. So it's important to keep some focus on the lower body and in general also it's just uh, good to release the hips and not only physically but also it is said that the emotions are stored in the hips so we will also try to release the suppressed emotions and feelings from the hips and just see what comes up maybe there will be some stories going through your head or something will just appear that you didn't even know of or think of anymore so just observe your experience, don't judge it, don't think about it twice, just let it flow, let it go through and enjoy it if possible. Please do have two blocks at hand, we will be needing them, I think some of the poses will be more accessible with the blocks and also in yin yoga we are holding the poses for an extended period of time so then we really want to make it as comfortable as possible to hold the poses comfortably and not to be in pain. Pain is definitely not what we want in yin yoga or in yoga in general. So at the moment we can just leave them aside and we will start in wide-legged child's pose so bring the toes to touch and the knees are going as wide as it's comfortable. So really use the first moments to adjust and to find your pose so you can feel the stretch, but it shouldn't be so intense that you are having a hard time staying in the pose. So keep in mind that we are staying here for a while. So really less is definitely more in yin yoga. Once you find the perfect sweet spot. Relax your forehead on the mat. Relax your arms, your neck. And start focusing on your breath. Keep pressing your hips onto the heels and if the forehead feels a little bit uncomfortable you can also place one cheek on the ground and then after some time you can just switch sides deep breaths in and out through the nose the belly is relaxed Expanding on the inhale and releasing on the exhale.
slowly start coming out of the pose. Bring your knees back together and bring your blocks to the front of the mat. We are coming into low lunge, so maybe you won't be needing the blocks, but I really like it with the use of the blocks. Bring the right foot to the front of the mat and then you want the right knee stacked directly over the ankle. And maybe you are staying here with the hands on the mat or you can be a little bit elevated by the use of blocks. So you just place the blocks to the longer edges of the mat. And again, maybe play with the distance in between your legs to make it more accessible. You can also rest your belly on the right thigh. Relax your neck, your shoulders. And come back to your slow, steady breaths. In and out through the nose. So here we are stretching into the inner groin, the thigh, the front of the left leg. And if it gets hard, just try to focus on your breath again, which is your ally. And maybe if the wrists start to feel a bit odd. You can also make a fist with each hand to support you further in the pose. If you notice that your mind starts to wander, just try to bring the attention to the pose, to the sensation in your legs, in your hips, and bring your focus back on the breathing. It's okay to have some thoughts running through our head. I mean, we are holding each pose for a few minutes, so it's a little bit more impossible not to think of anything. But try to make sure you are not getting caught up in some stories, not thinking about the day you still have ahead or had so far just as much as possible try to keep the attention on here and now at least for the most of the time Let's bring the right foot back. Before we go on to the other side, just sit back on your heels for a moment. To 
to release the tension that we've created. And once you are ready, we will do the pose on the other side. So now the left foot goes in between the hands, maybe using some help of the blocks or without placing your hands or fingertips onto the mat. Find the distance where you have some sensation, where you can feel the stretch, but it shouldn't be unbearable for sure. Somewhere in the middle. Spread your fingers wide so you are not putting all the weight on your wrists. And also can relax your belly onto the thigh. Again, to put some pressure off. And once you have your position, close your eyes to focus inwards. And to come back to your slow breath. Make sure you are not tensing up through your neck, your shoulders. Let's come out of this one. So again, we will sit on our heels. Notice any difference after these deep stretches. And our next pose will be pigeon. So again, with or without a block or blocks. First, we will bring the right knee behind the right wrist. The right ankle goes behind the left wrist. 
and then stretch the left leg behind you. If your right hip is quite far from the mat, you can place a block under the hip. It will make it more accessible. Just take the time here and make sure that you are in the middle, so you are not leaning on one side more than the other. And once you find your point of center, you can fall down, maybe completely onto the mat, or a block can go here under the chest, or under the forehead, under the forearms. Again, take some time and choose the variation that works for you the best. Try to relax your legs fully, your hips, and let the gravity do the work for you. If it becomes too much, just prop yourself more or come up and stay working on the pose from up. That's also possible.
let's come out of the pose take your time and do any little movements that feel good here just intuitively maybe stretch the leg do some hip, hip circles whatever you feel like And once you are ready, we will come to the other side. So now the left leg goes to the front. Don't worry if your shin is not parallel to the shoulder edge of the mat. Really not the important deal here. Find the center. So the weight is in the middle. Once you've got it, maybe prop your hip with a block or with some blanket. And then you can work the pose from up here or fold down onto the block, blocks or all the way down to the mat. We can use the first moments to adjust. So then you can be able to hold the pose for longer. We really don't want you to suffer through the experience. Once you find the edge, try to relax your lower body, the hips, but also the upper body, the shoulders. And just notice what is going on inside your head. Maybe you are thinking, oh my God, it's taking so long. I cannot hold the pose for so long. Should I give up? Should I continue? Or you are going through your to-do list for the rest of the day. Whatever it is. Just realize what's going on in your head and then gently try to put it aside and make some space for the moment here and now to fully enjoy our practice together and your dedication to your body your mind, your well-being. Pigeon pose is one of the most intense hip openers, but it's really beneficial not only for the stretch into the hips, but also it brings the blood to the reproductive organs, the uterus, the ovaries, so it promotes the hormonal balance a healthy menstrual cycle. It's a great pose for women's health overall.
what's come out of the folds. Again, any movements that you feel like here. Just to wake up the hip again. And next. You can sit with your legs extended in front of you. Left foot goes towards the inner thigh. And we are coming for head to knee pose. So maybe again with a block that can support your head. Or if you want, you can just let your head be free here, just dangling. Again, just play with the blocks and we are not trying to push or pull anything here it's a passive fold so just let the gravity do the work for you you can come as close to the mat as you want to you can also stay up pretty high and no worries with time you will see yourself folding more and more towards the ground. So really don't try to push it from the very beginning. Be patient with yourself, your body, and it will pay you back. Maybe with time you will need less blocks less support or not but maybe the pose will be just getting more comfortable i am also staying quite high and i don't mind it's not a competition to accept for the back of the leg we are also stretching into the spine into the whole posterior chain area that offer suffers from our desk jobs sitting at the computer or even from reading a book on the sofa and just improper sitting overall we are all guilty of that, but then we can fix it with some yoga. Let's start coming 
back up really carefully it's been here for a while so it can be a bit tough on the back and we will just switch sides so now the left leg expands the right foot goes towards the inner thigh and we will do the same on the other side just it's a different side different body don't expect the same experience though try to push your body into something it's not ready for so maybe this one can be more challenging or the other way around can be easier just really try to forget the experience you had on the right side and just be mindful of the left side and go as far as the body allows you to go don't push through less is for sure more in yin yoga we don't want to pull any muscles but by these passive stretches we want to target more the deeper layers the joints As slowly as before, use your arms, your hands to lift yourself up. And one more forward fold straddle this time. So you can open your legs to the sides. Wide open. And same here as before, maybe with a block or without. I will see what I choose this time and you can slowly start folding forward 
maybe just letting your head be heavy or let it rest on a block. The whole upper body is relaxed, the shoulders, the neck, the head. And let yourself with every exhale bring closer to the mat. So here, coming out, think of the back. Maybe use your hands to bend the knees. And we will come down, lying down on our backs. You can put the blocks aside. We won't be needing them anymore. And we are coming into our last pose into a happy baby so again options you can just bring your knees to your chest and work on the pose from here 
or you can grab your feet with your hands from the outer edge of the feet or you can grab your big toes with the two piece fingers so we are trying to bring the knees closer to the mat and at the same time a little bit pressing them open with the elbows the tailbone should stay close to the mat and try to keep the legs as relaxed as possible you will need a little bit of arm strength to keep the legs in place but not so much that you are dancing up through your shoulders just some middle point again deep belly breaths in and out through the nose can release Oof. I don't know how the babies do that for me personally it's quite a challenging pose uh, drop the knees from side to side to release the lower back And then find lots of space to come into Shavasana. Take some space with your hands, your arms, your legs. And allow yourself to relax fully. And to enjoy these final moments of relaxation. Still staying in the present moment.
and incorporating all the hard work we have done. Start moving your toes, your fingers, slowly waking up, a big stretch through your arms, through your legs, roll onto one side and come to the seated position, maybe with the eyes still closed. Bring your hands in front of your heart. And for the last time, notice the difference in your body, in your hips, opposite when you stepped onto the mat. And thank yourself 
for the practice, for the time you dedicated to yourself. I am really, really proud of you. Let's seal the practice with the chant of Om together one time. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Namaste. Thank you for joining me today on the mat. I hope your lower body, your hips are feeling loosened up. Mine definitely are off the charts loose enough and i hope to see you practicing with me again soon please let me know in the comments below how you felt during the practice and how you are feeling now i wish you a great rest of the day bye